Hi, this is Jason Nash, and the following lesson is part of my vSphere Advanced Networking course. Okay, we're back over here in the lab again, and uh, this is a fairly simple demonstration. It just takes a little bit of setup, so I'll show you how I've set it up to kind of demonstrate what I'm going to show you with load-based teaming. The idea here is that I had to set it up so that all traffic would be hashed across the same NIC on a destination server. So what I've got is I've got four XP machines. These are the ones we've used several times in the lab. I just I rename them so that they make sense in what we're doing. And I've got two of these, XP1 running on Optimus and XP2 running on Optimus. And these are going to be the targets. So I'll show you what I mean by that here in a second. Three and four are running on Megatron. And I'm using a tool called iPerf. It's a really good network diagnostic tool. It's uh, available for Windows, Linux, uh, you know, Mac OS X, about anything. And it's very useful for kind of doing a stress test on the network. So you can adjust all sorts of little settings. And you know, you set up servers, you set up clients, you can have a bunch of clients pointed to one server. However you want to do it, it's just a useful tool. So if we take a look at XP1 console, what we'll see give it a second, we'll probably get a warning at the top since I've got it open in a couple places. Yeah, we do. And I'm running iPerf. And what I'm doing is I'm running iPerf-S, which means I want you to be a server, listen for clients to connect to me, and I've set the TCP window size up to like 64K to kind of expand out the performance. And so you can see here that we've been running, I've, I've been running some uh, sessions here, and I've got that running as server on 1 and 2, same thing here, iperf-s, and then three and four are run as the client machines. So here we run iperf, it's a command line tool obviously, iperf, window size, dash t10,000 just says run this for 10,000 seconds, I just did that so it would run a long test, and then dash c means run me in client mode, and here is the IP address for the server that I'm connecting to. So I've got three connecting to one of these and four connecting to the other, and I'll show you that here. So what I've done up on these two machines here is just add a couple of NICs and basically ping one IP address, ping another IP address until I saw that they were hashed across the same physical connection on Optimus. And if we look at Optimus here, configuration, we will see that what I've done, I'm sorry, networking, go to the distributed switch, and I've only got two uplinks. So it should be VMNIC0 and VMNIC1. I could do all four. But at that point, I'm hashing the NICs across more physical connections with load balancing protocol, and it just makes it more complicated for me to do this demo. So normally, I would, you know, normally in my lab, I have all four NICs. Doesn't help to do one NIC because, you know, I can't really show you anything. So I do have it set up here as two NICs for the uplink. If we look at the distributed switch configuration, what we'll see here is if we go down to VM network, which is what everything's connected to, manage this port group, and look at teaming, we're doing it route based on source MAC hash. So basically, you know, one of those XP machines, I believe it was XP1, I've got three NICs emulated for that guy. Therefore, he has three MAC addresses, and I figure that way I'm balancing, you know, across NIC1, NIC2, and probably against NIC1 again. But I did that so that I can make sure, ping a couple things, and get traffic to run all across one of these NICs. And it ended up being, I believe, VM NIC 0. We can see that because if I come back to host, go to Optimus, go to Performance, and I've got a real-time chart running here just showing NIC performance, the data receive rate on NIC 0 is like doing a you know 100,000 kilobit a second. So it's been going up and down around 115 or so, and which is, gives us about close to 900 megabit. This is a gigabit switch, gigabit NICs. There it goes, it jumped up since I restarted that other one. So we're 900 megabit is about as good as I'm going to get in my lab. It's not really tweaked out. I don't have jumbo frames on, which would give me, you know, on gig, it's not much, a couple of percent. But, you know, overall, it, it, we can see it's kind of maxing that link out. Now, the problem here is, is that VM NIC1 is doing almost nothing. And I'll scroll you over here to the chart, which makes it even easier to see. So, we've got these two, two VMs. They're throwing a lot of traffic across the wire, 
but as I've talked about, you know, with the different hashing types, it's kind of a roll of the dice. It's a, it's a, you know, a mathematical algorithm that dictates how things get hashed. Sometimes you win, and sometimes you lose, and in this case, we have lost. Both of these VMs, heavy traffic, are going across the same neck. So that doesn't really help us. That's why I say it's not load balancing, it is load distribution. And we got distributed on the same NICs. So how do we fix this? Well, we fix it by turning on load-based teaming. So I'll flip that over. We'll give it, you know, 30, 45 seconds for the algorithm to kick in and look at everything. And what you're going to see is it's going to move one of those VMs from VM NIC 0 to VM NIC 1. And then the traffic should about be 50-50, mainly because I'm saturating the links as best I can. You know, if you were if you weren't having such equal requests from clients, it may not be 50-50. You might get 70-30, 60-40. There's no telling. It just all comes down to your workload and your traffic type. But again, demonstration purposes only. So let's go here. We'll go back over. We will go to networking. And we can change this port group. One neat little setting I don't think I've showed you yet, and I will again later, is you can do mass changes to port groups by using this little manage port group item. So if I wanted to switch all of these to load-based teaming, I could right-click, manage port groups, and you can pick what you want to change. So I'm going to do teaming and failover. Hit next. It says, which of these do you want to change? Well, I'll do, uh, since all the other ones are still set from before my uh, configuration here, I'll just choose this one. Now I could, again, go and manually just change this one, but if I wanted to change all of them, which for demonstration, again, I'll go ahead and do because I'm just going to change it back to what they were. We'll say next. And it says, okay, what do you want me to change them all to? Well, I want you to change them all to route based on physical NIC load, which is load based teaming. So I'll say next and finish. And you'll see, you can't really see here, but I'll see if I can show you. Kind of hard to do using a remote desktop here. There we go. It went through and reconfigured all the DB ports. So it's a great way to do mass changes if you got 20 or 30 or whatever port groups, you don't have to go one by one. So we go back to where we were to the performance tab. So let me remove this again. And we'll give it a minute. So again, load based teaming, it looks every 30 seconds. If a physical NIC is above 75% utilization, it'll try to move some VMs from two other available physical NICs. So we'll just sit here and wait. In a minute, we should start to see this change. There we go. Hopefully, we're going to see things shift over to NIC 1. So this flat line here at the bottom, they should kind of cross or even out, and you'll see it kind of distribute that load. All right, we're starting to see this. This is creeping up which is good. That's what we want to see. I'll hit refresh. And now if you notice, we're seeing, you know, 97,000 kilobytes and 79,000 right at 80,000 kilobytes. We'll hit refresh again because I'm an impatient person. And we're going to see this kind of balance out. There we go, 95 and 82. So what it's done is it's moved one of those, one of those VMs hashed across VM NIC 0 to VM NIC 1. If I had four NICs and a bunch of VMs doing traffic, we would start to see that kind of distribute across all the available NICs. So this is a great example of why I'm a big fan of load-based teaming. You know, it's the only option that actually looks at NIC utilization and makes decisions based on that. But again, remember, it falls back to that, you know, hash based on virtual port ID, basically. So my XP1 machine with three NICs in it, all three of those NICs are going to be hashed across one physical NIC. It's not as granular as MAC address hashing. It's not as granular as IP hashing. But unlike those, which are just mathematical algorithms, this actually looks at how much traffic is crossing those connections and tries to get them relatively evenly balanced as best it can. So it's, you know, very simple. You don't need any special switch configuration for it. Anywhere you can use virtual port ID or MAC hashing, you can absolutely use load-based teaming. Really, the only requirements are Enterprise Plus licensing, which I know for some people is not an easy requirement, and you have to be using the virtual distributed switch or the vSphere distributed switch, uh, which, again, if you've got Plus, I think you need to be doing that anyway, and therefore you can take advantage of this. So, again, real simple lab. Took a little bit of setup, so if you want to replicate this in your lab, just kind of use the performance tool here, start 
pushing traffic across with something like IPPerf or IPERF or you could do large file copies but IPERF is nice because like I can set it for a 10,000 second duration and not worry about files and, and all that and then you can just set this up and watch it flip over and again it works very very well just make sure you set your hashing type to by Mac or to by Mac or something like that and then flip it over and watch it kind of rebalance those